This could be the thing to convince you that you don't really need to pay more for a great smartphone. This is the Pixel 7a, and it's actually Google's most controversial budget phone ever because it's more expensive than before, but then it's a much better budget phone than it's ever been. Problem is, last year's awesome Pixel 6a is sticking around, and Google's dropped its price even further. So the question is, are you really getting $150 more value out of the newer phone? Because that's the price gap between these two right now. I'm Alex Dobie, this is XDA TV, let's get into it. So the Pixel 7a comes with all the generational upgrades you'd expect to the internal hardware. Like last year, it's got the same Google Tensor chip as the more expensive Pixels, and that's all well and good. But for me, the things that make this phone most worthwhile come further down the spec sheet. They're the little value adds that have long been table stakes features of flagships, but often don't make the cut in budget models. Things like a silky smooth 90Hz screen, wireless charging and an IP67 rating have been elusive in cheaper phones like this, especially in the West. That first point, the display, is probably the biggest single upgrade going from Pixel 6a to 7a. It's just so hard to go back to the noticeably choppier scrolling and animations of the 6a when you've used the newer phone. And I've said it before, 90Hz to 120, not a huge deal, but 60 to 90 is like night and day. And it's that smoother display that makes the 7a feel much more in line with Google's premium pixels than previous A-series models ever were. Quick aside though, you'll need to manually enable that smoother refresh rate because Google has cheekily stuck to 60Hz mode out of the box. On a related note, there is a trade-off here because the 6a and 7a have roughly the same size batteries and the newer phone is pushing a faster and slightly brighter display, which means the same amount of juice just doesn't go as far, and the 7a's longevity is noticeably weaker than the 6a's as a result. It's not horrible, but on heavier days, if you're going from early morning to late night, you may need to think about an early evening top-up. At least that's easier now with the addition of basic wireless charging, the first in an A-series pixel. But however you're refilling, be prepared to wait, because even over a wire you'll max out at an anemic 18 watts, and wireless is limited to just a trickle of 7.5 watts. With the 6a, 18 watts over a wire is your only way to charge. And sure, Google has never really embraced super fast charging, but 18 watts in 2023 is basically the tiny tim of smartphone charging speeds compared to some phones like Realme's GT Neo 3, priced around the same ballpark, offering speeds of up to 150 watts. It's the difference between a dripping tap and a fire hose. I also noticed the 7a running a little hotter than the 6a, and even seemed to get a little bit warmer than the Pixel 7 Pro, which is my go-to Android phone most of the time. Google's Tensor chips do have a reputation for getting a little toasty, especially compared to the latest Snapdragons. But yeah, this is the first for a while that I've actually noticed a buildup of heat, especially during the first few days with this phone. Believe it or not though, that's basically most of the bad out of the way for the 7a. Despite the very average battery life, there's an awful lot to like here. The 6.1 inch display is big enough not to feel cramped, but basically gives you an overall size that's easier to wrangle than many larger phones around the same footprint as the iPhone 14 Pro, though the bezels are a little thicker than what you'll see from that and other flagships. Both the 6a and 7a have pretty much the same footprint and hand feel, with a metal frame and glossy plastic back panels. I have to say though, neither of these really feels cheap in any way. In both cases, this is plastic done right. There are some subtle changes though, going from 6a to 7a. The new model is ever so slightly heavier, maybe thanks to the wireless charging coil or larger camera sensors. And subtle design improvements like the lack of plastic filler around the display and the more uniform look of the camera bar make for a design that just seems a bit more polished in the newer Pixel. Now let's talk about what's in that camera bar because the 7a brings the most comprehensive camera upgrade in the history of the A-series. See, ever since the original Pixel 3a, Google has used basically the same 12 megapixel Sony sensor for its primary cameras. And that actually dates back even further to 2017's Pixel 2, which used an earlier version of that same sensor that was basically the same on paper. Point is, until now, the A-series has been using pretty old sensors and in typical Google fashion, leaning on its processing and software to pull out surprisingly great results. On paper then, the move up to a 64 megapixel sensor spitting out 16 megapixel images is a significant upgrade. 
But the differences between the two are much more nuanced because after all, this is a Google camera and how they process that image has always been key to what makes cameras like this great. Both perform superbly across a wide range of situations, even with backlighting and motion and other challenges thrown into the mix. If you go pixel peeping in some shots with a lot of detail, you'll see the advantage of the 7a's higher res sensor in areas like the brickwork here. Basically, it's the same for anything where you put a lot of fine detail like patterns or lines. Still though, it's very close and I'd be perfectly happy with either image in these situations. Other minor advantages of the 7a include a slightly wider field of view at one times and a bit less distortion around the edges of the frame when using that primary camera. See how some of the details in the gates here get smudged out on the shot from the 6a. Low light also benefits from the larger sensor size of the 7a in darker portions of shots like this where more fine detail is retained along with more true to life white balance. Though it has to be said even in challenging lighting conditions the 6a still holds its own really well here. The 7a's ultrawide also benefits from a wider field of view than the 6a's in addition to a bump up to 16 megapixel resolution. But otherwise the performance is basically a wash. There's really nothing in it even though it isn't quite the same sensor in both devices. Both produce very similar shots in terms of colour, dynamic range, fine detail and all the other key metrics. Only real difference is that slightly wider frame on the 7a. Telephoto is a bit of a weird one. The big advantage you'd expect to see from the larger sensor of the 7a is better digital zoom performance, and especially with Google since it has its super res zoom which uses the movement of the OIS module to zoom more cleanly. And with the 7a when it works you can get really excellent shots at around 2 to 3 times, with a real noticeable improvement over the 6a at around 5 times. But I noticed a weird bug when zooming with the 7a where basically it would sometimes use the wrong camera to take the photo. And this was kind of confusing at first because occasionally I take two zoom photos side by side and the 6a would look noticeably better than the 7a. So what's going on here? Well after looking at the EXIF data what was actually happening was the 7a was taking zoomed shots from its ultra wide camera. So for obvious reasons it looked way worse than the shot from the 6a. I have no idea why this was happening. It's possible I wasn't giving the phone enough time to switch lenses but this isn't something I've noticed from either the 6a or any other smartphone I've used. It could be that an update or two is needed from Google to iron out some of the kinks here. Video performance also isn't as drastically improved as you might expect, but the 7a's 4K shooting capabilities are boosted slightly by the larger main sensor, helping it retain a bit more fine detail in moving and backlit shots. As before though, you really need to drill down in areas of finer detail like the water ripples here to actually see any difference, so I feel like the biggest improvements you're going to see from 6a to 7a are in photography, not video. Finally let's touch on the software and this one's going to be really quick because the experience is virtually identical here and that's not a bad thing. Both pixels benefit from one of the best Android experiences around with intelligent conveniences like photo unblur for faces and live translation inside chat apps. The pixel experience also gives you live transcription of audio notes in the recorder app plus instant recognition of songs playing in the background all of which makes the pixel software the most useful on any Android phone. And that's aside from the clean visuals of the Pixel UI and Material U, which themes the entire interface based on the colours in your wallpaper. Plus because they're pixels, both the 6a and 7a get 3 years of OS updates and 5 years of security patches from the day of launch. Obviously with the 7a that means you get a little bit more time with the new model before it's inevitably sent to live on a farm upstate with all the Nexus phones. So it feels like the Pixel 7a should be a simple proposition. Take the 6a and press that big upgrade meme button and you've got the 7a. But a few factors have conspired to make it a more difficult decision than I first expected. To begin with the 6a's price really is excellent for what you're getting in 2023. And second the 7a does have a few weaknesses compared to its predecessor. Battery life is a little bit worse. The phone runs hotter and there's that camera bug that I mentioned earlier. But I think the new camera's improved low light capabilities and the boost the telephoto from the main shooter when it actually works right combined with the brighter and faster screen and more RAM makes it worth the extra cash. And that's the other thing about the 6a, as good as it is there are a few key bits of hardware that are already starting to show their age like the 6 gigs of RAM that may hinder multitasking over the next couple of years and the 60 hz screen that's outclassed already even by many entry level phones offering 90 or 120. That and the extra year of software support means that if it was my money I would go for the 7a even with the compromises around battery life and thermals. If you want a Google flagship without spending flagship money this really does get you most of the way. 
But that's just me. Hit the comments, let me know what you think. Is the 7A really worth the extra cash over the 6A? And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss more comparisons like this from us here at XDA. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.